morning, everyone. Uh, Marilyn and I are going to sing a song real quick. It's an old hymn called, Does Jesus Care? <clears throat> later. And as usual, I always have to catch my breath real quick. Between allergies and running around the parking lot, it takes me a second. <laughs> so um, I just want to make an announcement, two announcements actually. The first one is we are hoping to get our radio transmitter this week so you can listen on the radio from the parking lot. So if all goes well and we get it in the mail and it works the way we think it is, you'll be able to turn to like 88.1 or 107 and hear it from the radio in your car. So that'll be exciting. Um, our second announcement is we have good news. Um, we have uh, lots of people's offerings and commitments coming in, which is a big piece of how we're gonna continue to pay people during this time. But we also received a grant from the government for $8,000 
to help stop gap this time, which is a good piece because um, we don't have any renters right now. <laughs> so we're losing a lot of income. Um, some people are paying, some people are paying what they can. So um, it looks like God is working the pieces together and we're still working on getting more grants and loans because you know we can use all the help we get. But for the moment, at least the pieces are starting to fall together. So I'm really pleased about that. If you look, um, there's a call to worship. It's very brief. Let's sit, open ourselves to worship the Lord. Lord, we long for you. Touch our, our eyes, our, our ears, ears, our hearts, we, we pray. pray. Lord, we long for your healing. Touch, Touch your, your blessings, blessings on our hands, we, we pray. pray. Our first hymn is There is a Bomb in Gilead. Let us sing. or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon, and a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple, called the beautiful gate, so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John go, about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him 
as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. It's my job to drop things, just so you know. <laughs> oh my gosh, it just teetered, right? And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, may the med meditations of my mouth and our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, as we examine your word together. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So once again, our text is fairly apropos to what is going on in our world, right? This is the text that is laid out in the narrative lectionary, and it's all about healing. And I'm like, okay, yeah, God, just heal us. This is good. <laughs> we could all just be healed and go home and be done. But healing in the Bible is a much more complex su subject than what we think it is. Healing in the Bible is translated in the Old Testament as shalom. It means wholeness and peace and healing all at the same time. And the reason why the man who was lame who had to sit outside the temple and beg was he was not allowed to enter the temple because he was not whole. They assumed that the reason why he had a deformity was because he or his parents had sinned. And that that was what was going on. Jesus, multiple times, when in his ministry, um, contradicts this idea that, the, that sin keeps you from God. And that sin is the cause of what makes your body not work correctly. Right? Sometimes, your body is just different. And when you look at disabled politics and disabled theologians they talk about that jesus is a disabled christ we talked about this a little bit last year he comes back with holes still in his hands and feet and a wound still in his in his side and if thomas hadn't asked jesus about this we would all assume that healing meant that jesus was not going to bear any scars of who he was but jesus was fully human and in order to be a full human, those wounds cannot be blocked out or just miraculously healed like they didn't happen. Because then Jesus wouldn't have been the Jesus who died for us. And we want Jesus to be the one who died for us. We want that to count. And so he comes back as a Jesus who is whole, but his body still has scars. And we can think about this with people with disabilities. When we think about my son Wesley, I don't want him to be someone else. And I don't know what it means for him to be whole, but I don't want it to be, oh, well, he needs to be someone else to be Wesley. Christ loves him exactly the way he is. This is how it is with the man with the disability at the gate of the temple. What Jesus restores to him, what the name of Jesus Christ restores to him, is not just healing. The standing up and walking is the least miraculous thing, which is really hard for us humans to understand. Every biblical story is like this. We like to concentrate on the miraculous healing of the body, right? We want the, our bodies to be perfect. A 
I got news. We're all temporarily abled people here, <laughs> right? At some point, some part of our body is not going to work the way we want it to anymore, right? Being, it, being human means that we have weaknesses. In fact, there, Paul goes on and on about our weaknesses are Christ's strengths and don't worry about your weaknesses. That's not the most important part of you, right? There's all these letters about this. We are all temporarily abled right now, right? If you are perfectly healthy and great and happy, great. That's not going to last forever. Everyone's one car accident, one illness, or getting old enough and wise enough that your body starts to kind of go, you know, give in because you've worn it out and you've put it to good use, that you are not going to be able-bodied your entire life. So all of us, if we're lucky, will experience our bodies not working right at some point. Hopefully all of us will live long enough to deal with this. And I don't know about you, but whenever I'm sick, I forget how good it is to have a good body until I'm sick and I can't do something anymore. And then I get really whiny. And I'm like, I just want to be able to walk across the room and breathe. I had mono in high school and that was not fun, right? Every time I felt better, I would go and do something because I was so bored out of my mind. And then I'd relapse because I'd be sick again. I'd be like, ah, dang it. But I had forgotten how good it was to feel good and have your body working. So even though this man who is crippled gets this great gift to be able to walk, that is not the real gift. The real gift is he gets to walk into the temple. He is deemed whole and healed and worthy enough to go and be with God. And the real healing is he is, again, reconciled with his entire community. I find it interesting that friends of his like carry him to the gate to, to beg because usually people don't even want to touch someone with a disability or with a disease in the Old Testament because you're afraid you're going to catch the sin right? If you get too close to someone who's disabled, you're afraid you're going to catch the sin, or you don't know how to respond to the person with a disability, so you stay far away. This is a very human trait. We still do this today, 2,000 years later, right? We still have trouble kind of knowing how to deal with people who are different than us. But the healing we are asking for, the touching of the fringe of Jesus Christ, right? The little tiny touch of God, the wholeness we want is not just healing of coronavirus, but we want the fabric of the community to be able to be one again. We are asking for the same thing that this man is asking. We're asking to be able to enter the temple again. We're asking to be able to hug and be with our friends. We're asking to be a part of the community. We don't just want coronavirus to be treated. That is not enough for us, and that is not enough for God. We want to work for the kingdom to be together and for humanity to come together and for peace to happen. Do you know how many doctors are talking to each other in countries that usually don't talk to each other? China and Russia and America all at the same time? That's amazing. That hasn't happened in eons. We want peace and reweaving of the fabric. We want to see the healing of the earth. We want to see how we can do things better. We can understand that, you know, people's lives are more important than getting what you want, getting able to do what you want when you want, right? Um, there's a piece where we want this wholeness, this shalom. We want total and complete healing. And so I think it's interesting that what is given to this man is the name of Jesus Christ. The one who promotes healing and forgiveness for all people, no matter who they are and what they are, no matter what degree sick they are, God promises complete healing. Not complete healing where we don't recognize ourselves anymore. Not complete healing where our bodies are not our bodies anymore. But fullness of ourselves in great community and peace with everyone else. We can fully be ourselves and the other people can be fully themselves. Can you imagine us living in harmony in that way? Only God can do that. Only God can do it so that you can be you and I can be me and we're not going to annoy each other anymore. I don't know how that's going to happen. I'm living with my family right now and I love them, but we're annoying each other a little bit sometimes, right? Because they're being them and we're being ours. My favorite fight that's repeated is Ashburn's not big on singing and Franklin walks around singing all day long. And they don't mean to be annoying each other, but man, they're annoying each other. My sister, um, she had really bad asthma growing up. 
and she was allergic to cats. So she breathed really loudly. My brother used to say, she's breathing to annoy me. And my parents said, we're pretty sure that's not what's going on. <laughs> we're pretty sure her breathing is not on purpose to annoy you. We're pretty sure she's just trying to breathe and it happens to annoy you. But here's the shalom, the name of Jesus Christ, the peaceness and wholeness where we're gonna be woven together and we're gonna be able to live with one another. We're going to be able to respect doctors the same that we respect trash collectors. We're going to understand that every single person is essential. We're going to understand that child care workers are pretty, pretty important and probably should get respect, right? We're going to learn how um, all the immigrants who are working in the fields who are, we don't have enough of right now are pretty essential to the economy, right? There are going to be pieces where we're going to have a better understanding of how it is we fit together and how we all be, make the kingdom because we understand that every part of the body is vital. Right? It's like 1 Corinthians 12 where, you know, the ear cannot say to the foot, I have no need of you, right? You can't, you can't divide the body. We need every part together. And we are learning that more every day. And while we're waiting to get in the temple, we are praying for healing, for shalom, for our community to be together, for that kind of wonderful touch of the hem of Jesus Christ, just the name of Jesus Christ that inspires us to understand that we are all the family of God and that every single one of us can work for good. And it's amazing when that happens. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The next thing we're gonna do is sing uh, Sweet, Sweet Spirit in this place. Then after we sing together, we'll do a prayer. I'll begin and then we'll pray the Lord prayer together. And then Roger and Marilyn will close us with a song. All right, let's sing There is a Sweet, Sweet Spirit in this place.
We await the healing of the entire world. We breathe for that moment that the world is made whole. Orient us towards you and your touch, we pray, as Jesus taught us together, saying, Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. and the 
uh, kind of community building together. I give thanks that we have leaders in the church and that we received the grant and that we are working hard to continue to build your kingdom today in every way. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Peace be with you all.